I've shown you in previous Photoshop demos that Photoshop's filters can really enhance your photography. But I also want to show you that Photoshop filters can enhance your photos through the use of layer masks. So to prove that, I'm going to go to open and I'm going to go to my chapter 7 folder and folder 7.3. Add this simple shot of this crow that I took on a vacation out in Arizona. And I really like the darkness right here, but I don't like the brightness of all the rest of this photo. So here's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to double click the word background and we'll just call this crow. And then I'm going to make a brand new blank layer. I'll double click that name and we'll just call that black edges. I'm going to hit D for default colors. And then again, on a Mac, I hold my option key and hit the big delete key on a PC. That would be alt and backspace. I'm going to fill that entire layer with the foreground color. Now, obviously, as you can tell, I'm going to pull that layer below the photo of the crow. Then I'm going to click on the layer of the crow and I'm going to make a rectangle marquee smaller than the size of the file. So I'll come in here, click and drag down to about there. Kind of creating a bolder little border around this image. But again, as I pointed out in the past, whatever you select, that's what you're trying to protect. That's why you selected it. So when you have a selection made, Photoshop is going to protect what's in here. It doesn't care about anything out here. So I'm going to add a layer mask. And you can see that right there. Photoshop protected what was in the selection. It disregarded the outer edge. That's why I created this black layer. Okay, if I turn that off, you've got all this missing outer edge of the photograph. So on the right, on the layer mask, these are a series of pixels the exact same size as the layer that they are editing. Pixels can have filters applied to them. So you can apply filters to your layer mask. So right over here, I can see a white border. I'm currently on this layer's layer mask. And I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I am going to crank this up to about 100 and I get a soft blur effect around the outer edges of the photo. In fact, 100 is not enough for me. I'm going to go around 120, really create this soft effect. When I click OK, I have blurred the layer mask, not the layer that it is working on. The way you can look at a layer mask is you hold your option or alt key and click and you can see I've added a slight blur. Obviously it doesn't blur flat colors, it blurs the edge. I can option or alt click again and see how it's affecting the layer. But I'm going to add another filter on top of that, not just the one blur effect. So I'm still on the layer mask. Now I can go to filter menu again, distort and glass. And what this does is show me the upper left corner of that edge. It doesn't really work on the interior. It works on the blurry edges. And right over here, I have different types of glass filters. I have blocks of glass, canvas glass, frosted glass, or in our case, tiny lenses. I'm going to take the distortion and pull it all the way to the right. I really want these to be pronounced so people can easily see them. I don't want smoothness because the more I drag that, the more blurry they're going to get. So I want to keep that down here to maybe two. And then I want to scale these up. Okay, I don't want the lenses to be so small, people aren't going to see them. So I'm going to scale them up to around 140. So they're pretty pronounced. And when I click OK, that's the effect 
I'm going to get around my photo. Really like that effect. But I'm going to add one more effect. Okay. Filter, distort, and ripple. Now, this is the old fashioned filter preview window. So when I'm looking at this white, I'm looking at the very center of that layer mask. So I have to click and drag it down and let go, click and drag it down and let go. And now I can kind of see the edges or the corner of that. And I want my ripple to be more pronounced and I want those to be large ripples. So they really show up. So you can see how it affects all those little tiny lenses by blasting them apart. So now when I click OK again, I've got this really cool textured effect along the outer edges of the photo, not the photo itself. Okay, this is non-destructive editing. And what I mean by that is I can hold my shift key and click and I never actually touch the photo. I'm doing all my filter effects on the layer mask, not the photo itself. Shift click again on the layer mask to enable it. And that's a really cool way to affect your photography by applying filters to the layer mask rather than the filters to the photo itself. Have fun, experiment. Some filters work great with each other. Some filters destroy the effect. But you're going to learn that as you experiment here in Photoshop. See you next time.